hi, I'm the I can't talk to Kusk, and we're gonna be asking the question, what is up with Aries? So, Aries is a cardinal sign, which means they start off a season, and they start off the season of spring, which starts off the zodiac calendar, so, you know, they're basically the start of life, because in spring everything just comes back to life. And, you know, that's kind of interesting because, you know, the opposite of Aries is Libra, and that's when everything dies because Libra represents the start of fall. Anyways, um, so Aries is also a fire sign. Other than that, um, you know, that means they're more lively. They start things. They're very confident, you know. Um, do fire signs start things? Well, inherent nature because Aries is the first fire sign. And it's a first sign in general, actually. So they do start off this thing for the fire signs where they are very confident and they're very outgoing. And they do kind of start things in a sense, you know. Leo, on the other hand, is a fire sign. They're the fireest, fi fieriest <laughs> fire sign out there. And because, you know, they rule the sun, Aries exalts the sun, but Leo, um, rules over the sun. And they basically rule over creativity, creating things, summer love, um, you know, your ego. That is all Leo stuff, and that has to be confident and outgoing, and start creative endeavors. And that's kind of what Aries sets up for the rest of the fire signs, obviously. You know, the next, the last one's Sagittarius, and they have to start their philosophical journeys and their travel ideas. And, well, their ideas in general. Okay, Sagittarius has a lot of ideas. They want to learn about a lot of stuff. And that's just what they basically do. They're the travelers, they're the wanderers. That, that's Sagittarius realm. And without Aries, they wouldn't have the drive to necessarily see what's out there in the world and understand what is out there in the world. So with that being said, Aries kind of sets up that foundation for the fire signs, like how Taurus sets up a foundation for the earth signs, that they have to be a little more cautious and a little more stable, and you know, Gemini sets up this mutability for the air signs, and Cancer sets up um, an emotional base for the water signs. So, with that being said, um, also Aries is ruled by Mars and exalts the sun, like I said. So what does that necessarily mean? Well, Aries rules over the planet of anger, uh, sex, passion, along with Scorpio. Scorpio also rules over Pluto, though. <laughs> but basically, you know, Aries is the main ruler of Mars, and, you know, Scorpio is their sub-ruler, which is like, you know, they, they, they chill on the same planet, basically. I don't know. Alright, there's not enough planets out there for each sign to just chill on, I guess. Back on to Aries. They rule over Mars, so, um, their, um, energy is very outgoing. There's a, there's a lot of passion in Aries, okay? They're known as the warrior. They go after what they want. They, you know, want to explore the world since, you know, they're the first sign, okay? They have nothing set before them. Like, you know, Taurus has Aries set before them. So they do understand, you know, you have to go after things and you have to learn <laughs> by doing. But also they have a sense of stability and comfort added onto them because they're like, you know, we have to go after things, but also we need a home and we need to make sure that our home's okay and that we have everything to be stable. So with that being said, you know, Aries just sets up the whole entire foundation for all the signs, technically, not even just the fire signs. Wow, I'm just, can't think today, but yeah. So basically, you know, Aries doesn't have that dynamic that each of the other signs have, where there's a sign before them. Technically, Pisces is before Aries. And honestly, like, that kind of doesn't really matter because Pisces is the, tw is the 12th sign, the last sign, and, you know, Aries is the first, so technically, like, when we're thinking about, you know, 1 through 12, 12 does not be does not come before 1. Um, on, in the wheel, maybe, but, you know, numbers aren't on a wheel, so I'm sorry about that. But, you know, maybe, you know, Aries does have that subconscious side, you know, behind them, you know, maybe just, like, all the signs just mesh together, you know, represents some sort of, I guess, past life thing. 
and that's what's before Aries. But honestly, we can debate that. So with that being said, what are the stereotypes? <laughs> Number one, Aries ascendants are hard to pinpoint, which honestly, this is one I made up. <laughs> because they just, when Aries is on the ascendant, because Aries is um, the natural placement for the ascendant, because Aries is the first sign, the ascendant is the first house. When Aries is in that place, it just gives someone a very confident, warm vibe, and you just see them as very outgoing. And you don't necessarily see any stereotypes of Aries when it comes to Aries Ascendants when you first meet them. <laughs> Unlike other Ascendant signs, basically. Um, so they're harder to guess or pinpoint than any other Ascendant sign. And this also kind of goes for Libra and Pisces. Alright, with these three Ascendant signs, you will probably not guess them if someone with those Ascendant signs say, like, you know, come up to you and say, hey, guess my ascendant sign, or say, hey, what zodiac sign do I seem like to you? You know, you would not pinpoint those signs. But, you know, when it comes to, like, those three signs, like, the other signs seem more guessable. Like, if someone's very talkative and lively, um, and just very out there and just seem like they're always nervous, you know, you can be like, hey, you're, you're a Gemini ascendant probably, or you have Mercury somewhere lurking, lurking around there, and they'd be like, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's the case, maybe it isn't. Um, but yeah, most likely that would be a Gemini Ascendant, or with me, um, you know, I got the who knows, <laughs> um, and I seem way too chill all the time, and sometimes that comes off as awkwardness, um, you know, obviously, Taurus Ascendant, someone be like, hey, you're definitely a Taurus Ascendant, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah how, how did you know? Am, am I too chill? <laughs> you know, like, that, that's just basically how it goes for, like, most of the Ascendant signs, uh, for sure. Aries does not necessarily have a specific vibe when it's in the first house, and it might have, and, like, when someone does have an Aries Ascendant, it might have to, like, you know, their other placements definitely can influence that ascendant. Like their sun, their moon, those two especially, whatever the fuck is aspecting the first house, if anything is, um, if anything's in the first house, you know, all that fun jazz. If there are things thrown in there, that vibe would basically reflect their sun sign or their moon sign or whatever's in the first house. Whatever's aspecting the first house first in the, then the Aries ascendant. Um, Hey, so I had to scrap the video. I've been like really off this past week and the video got incoherent. So I'm just gonna do this right now, okay? Stereotype number two, Aries is more prone to having a brash offensive sense of humor. And that, that can be the case, obviously. It depends on the person's chart. That's why I'm making this series is just a stereotype series. This is not set in stone, okay? This is just how people perceive the signs. And with Aries being the youngest, they are more prone to just joking about whatever to make the day go by, I guess. Them and the older signs, Scorpio through Aquarius, do have this too. So yeah, I think those five signs do really have just that proneness to offensive humor. How Scorpio and Aquarius goes about it, though, stereotypically, is that they just want to go after shock value. Sagittarius just says whatever they think is funny, and if someone um, thinks they went a little too far, you know, they'll think about it and probably um, think about it really quickly. <laughs> you know, if they um, think they're right or if they, or if, you know, Sagittarius thinks that, you know, they were right all along. With Capricorn, um, they try to just tell whatever is clever. And if someone tells Capricorn they went too far, they will probably be like, um, you know what, I don't think so. Maybe like a couple hours later they would um, process everything and maybe come to, to a conclusion. And if um, whoever said they went too far is right or if Capricorn didn't go too far in the first place. So with that being said, um, Scorpio and Aquarius, they're, they're all, I don't even know how they they had approach if someone told them they went too far it really depends on their mood because with the with the fixed signs they can be stubborn but Scorpio and Aquarius are very ever-changing and you just don't know what's really up with them or how they're going to react stereotypically because like I said they're the signs that promote change the most in a sense 
Um, and by that I mean like extreme change, not like Gemini change where everything's just like free flowing and perceiving. No, like Scorpio and Aquarius are like hard hitting change period. <laughs> you know, that's Uranus and Pluto right there. So basically what I think, um, about Aries is that Aries is like Sagittarius and Capricorn mixed together. Um, you know, they say whatever they think is funny, but if they got told they were going too far, they'd probably like defend themselves at first and then, but instead of Capricorn take a few hours, um, they would probably take five minutes to think about it. <laughs> Um, like Sagittarius and be like quick in saying, oh, well, I was right all along or, oh, you, you're right. I'm sorry. I should have not joked about that. So yeah, that's like a stereotypical thing. Um, number three, they can be impulsive. So it's stereotype number three. Yeah, I think this is the case. I have an Aries Saturn. That's why. Um, and with that being said, Saturn rules a lot of things in my chart. So um, with Aries, you know, they're the youngest sign. So they have a lot of energy, and they're going to be youthful for a long time, okay? Um, they are, you know, when if you ever met an Aries sun, they're very vibrant people, or Aries moons, or Aries risings. They're very vibrant, they're very warm, they age how they're supposed to age, and, you know, they just, they're just very vibrant people. I don't know how else to put it, but... With that being said, they do have a lot of youthful traits. Like, they can be impulsive sometimes, um, and that's just how it goes. Uh, like I said, they're the warrior. They go after what they want. Sometimes they don't really think it through, and, you know, they end up in some random place and just like, hey, you know what? M maybe I should have not done that. Maybe I should have, like, made some steps to plan things. And obviously, that is just a stereotype right there. It depends on the Aries <laughs> or, you know, their Aries Sun, Moon, or Ascendant. Like I said, they could have a Capricorn Saturn and actually plan shit through. And, y you know, it's just, it really depends on the chart. And that's what the series is about. You know, I'm pretty impulsive and I am not even an Aries. So there you have it. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this somewhat video and my ramblings, so to say. And yeah, peace out, hug a tree. So yeah, also I'd like to thank my subscribers, uh, Duffy, Firam, and MUMS Universe. I hope you all had a lovely day and whatnot. And yeah, that that's the end of the video right here. Um, y you can um, click out of it now. Yeah.